Excuse me. Okay. Sorry, Larry. Go ahead. Well, I would. I, I agree. We tried. That should probably be on record. I was just saying. Does it? Does it go beyond us? Does it? Does the? Does the? Does the? Uh, does the town have to approve it in a different way other than us? No. So it's it's um, the regulations that um, are promulgated by the bylaw. So the conservation commission will hold a public hearing to take public comment on the changes. And what I was going to do is set up our website to include the previous version, marked up versions, and then the, the like latest version that you guys are reviewing for final approval and take public comment on that and then um, and then hopefully approve. I, I'm shooting for early May for that. Um, so. Well, thank you, Aaron and Michelle and Leroy for all your hard work on that. Yeah, that's not easy. Yeah. Um, okay, well, so let's kick off this meeting. Is that okay? Is that okay, Aaron? Mm -hmm. yep. Okay, so, um, cause I see we have seven attendees already, but not our new commissioner, I've been checking. Um, so welcome to the Amherst Conservation Commission meeting, March 9th, 2022. Whoa, did you guys just get weird feedback? Mm -hmm. Is that my fault? It seems to have gone away. Um, Okay, well, first item. Do you have headphones? You think my headphones? Everybody, Everybody mute them. Everybody who's not talking mute. Let's see. Okay, that seems better. Um, yeah, so let's try to mute when we're not talking, I guess, for this meeting. Um, thanks, good idea, Aaron. So um, we have a pretty full agenda. We only have three hearings and one of them is continued because they hadn't yet notified of butters, um, but there's a lot of stuff going on. Aaron's bouncing a lot. So there are a bunch of um, kind of big other business items. Um, so let's try to move through the early part of the meeting efficiently as always. Um, so we can give some time to some of these bigger ticket other business items. Um, so the first item on the agenda, I think, is an update for me, and that was pretty much my update. I don't see Dave here. Aaron, do you have an update? No update from Aaron. Okay. Then the next thing on the agenda, I think, is land use applications from Scott Jackson. Um, I'm looking to see if I can see him we could also talk about the land use policy let's see if scott's here i do not see scott jackson called in if there's anyone in attendance of the meeting that's going to talk about scott jackson's land use applications please raise your hand so he may or may not show up Jen, okay um and i told him like if you can make it come if you can't don't worry okay. about it okay mostly because i know that this is a um a pre he has previously had this approved by the board so it's kind of like he administratively is doing it just to make sure that it's okay because he took two years off due to covid um okay. so it's been he's been doing it i think for like a decade he's been doing these two classes on these two properties yeah they looked very familiar um so i'm sure everybody has these land use applications in front of them, but in brief summary, it looks like the first one is uh, at Plum Springs on March 30th, and he's using it for field labs. Oh, field labs on March 30th, April 1st, 6th, 8th, 22nd, 27th, 29th, and May 4th, 20 students. Oh, there we go. Um, Um, it looks like it doesn't say what the class is, but equipment is flagging that will be removed. Um, field data forms, no alteration to the conservation area. Um, not much other information in there. I think it's the same. I took this class a number a long time ago, and it's just it's a it's a great class. It's just for like wetland um, wetlands identification and 
how to use field um, field forms and everything like that. So um, it's pretty straightforward. They might dig a couple soil pits, but really you stick them right back when you're done. Yeah, so if, that, if that helps. Yeah, it's a field methods class for wetlands. I took yeah. it too. Yep. I have no problem with this. Um, and I don't see any possible problems. I mean, the only question we ever have with this is parking, but it looks like, let's see, does he detail it? I'm just going to stop sharing for a second because Dave Z is saying he's having trouble getting in and I have to send him a link. Um, okay. So while you guys chat. Oh no. Okay. Yeah. So unless anyone else sees any flags with this, I think Scott has a track record of um, being a very responsible user of conservation areas for these classes. So I feel comfortable approving these land use applications. So you have any questions? Okay. Um, so let's see, did Aaron want a motion to approve these? I didn't draft one. Um, but you could just use, um, hold on just one second. Here, I'll just say it. Um, so we need. <laughs> so CLU uh, 22 and 22-2 uh, and CLU 22-3 are the permit numbers, if that helps. Yeah, so I need um, motions to approve land use applications with permit numbers CLU-22-3 and CLU-22-2 um, for Scott Jackson for use of um, conservation area for field methods research classes. So moved. Second. Okay, voice vote. Larry. Aye. Fletcher. Aye. Leroy. Aye. Michelle. Aye. Laura. Laura. Aye. Oh, sorry. And I'm an I. Thumbs up you. So those are all approved. Aaron, is Dave okay? I sent him a link. Um, just check. He texted me, so I'll just check. Um, but if you guys want to move on to the um, minutes, the um, or the the mission statement, I don't know if you guys wanted to talk about the mission statement. That would be okay. the minutes. Well, here yeah. let's Either let's one. do the minutes really quickly. Um, so we'll skip ahead. So we have Aaron to talk about the um, mission statement, but we're looking for motions to approve the minutes um, from six twenty four twenty and five twenty seven twenty. Does anyone have any comments or corrections to those minutes? No, move to approve. Okay. Second. Um, so I need a mo motion. Was that a motion, Laura? It was. Okay. Did you second, Fletcher? I second. Got a second. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Um, All right. We need a voice vote. Larry. Aye. Fletcher. Aye. Leroy. Aye. Michelle. Aye. Laura. Aye. And I'm an aye. Um, so the next item on the agenda is the mission statement. And I am trying to pull it up. I can also pull it up here too. Sorry, it's, I'm multitasking over here. I can't seem okay. to hear. I can't hear from Dave, so I'm not really sure what's uh going on with land that. use apps where did you i know i saw it last night where did you save it am i losing my mind which, which e the email, from, email from aaron oh okay um so this was the email um and this was the draft now this was taken from um the weston conservation commission and i just included Amherst, um, because they had a they have a really nice existing land use policy. So I did borrow sort of some of their layout a little bit for ours, although although ours is much more comprehensive and um, different. But I think the mission statement is really important because it kind of helps us to prioritize um, the entire document and just help guide us a little bit. Um, and one of the co Dave did have a comment on this um, that you know he 
like number one is to preserve open space for the enjoyment of the community, but he thought maybe the protection of water, land, you know, habitat and stuff might be number one for us. Um, so we might want to reorder these. We might want to change them. It's completely up to you guys um, how you want to approach this or if you want to completely wipe this out and start with your own um, completely unique document. Yeah. So when I looked at this, there were, I mean, I agree a similar structure is a good place to start. There are a few things in here that kind of I flagged. Um, and at the heart of it is really like this tension between preservation and conservation and land management. So like preservation has the connotation that you're just keeping it the way it is. Um, and then conservation, something similar land management implies like actively managed for these end goals. And then the last was a sustainable manner. I think that also sustainable can, a lot of different things can be conflated into the word sustainable. Mm -hmm. So I feel like we do all of those things. Like we do preserve the land, you know, like it is not being converted to other uses, but we also manage it. Um, <laughs> for various reasons, uh, like a lot of the mowing that we do, like that's not necessarily preservation by definition. Um, so those were the things when I read this, I like jotted down a couple of like ideas, but I'm really interested to hear, I know other people on this commission have a ton of experience with this kind of thing. So I'm really interested to hear what other people's thoughts were. I agree with a bunch of that, um, Jen. I think number three, definitely just get rid of sustainable manner because that has way too much. You can go anywhere with that. But I, I yeah, so I was, I'm, I'm not sure if we just want like these bullet points or like, I like it, I like it's being short. I think that's important. Mm -hmm. But when you talk about the preservation versus conservation and those types of, um, you know, like number one, you could say we protect open space, you know, mm -hmm. instead of preserve open space. So because we are managing these lands actively, very actively, because we kind of have to, and but it gets really complex to try to explain that. So maybe talking about the protection, we try to we are trying to educate, we are, but the conservation commission, I think I, I agree with whatever um you said that Dave's idea was like take number one number two and put it as number one because really what we're here for is that resource which is this water and then it goes from there because we are actually a unique conservation commission where we get to manage over two thousand acres you know most con cons are just strictly wetland you know so it doesn't say what to do but those are kind of my ideas off the top yeah and i would expand that further i agree with everything you said fletcher i'd expand it further to say that we may protect water, land, animal, and plant natural resources for the health of the environment and the health of our community, because we are protecting it for the health of our air and water so that the people who live here experience healthy, healthier natural resources. And there's a lot of research to kind of connect those two. Um, so I would put people in that equation, but that's controversial in like the land management world, I think. so. I, I definitely want to hear from others. Anyone else? Any thoughts about this? Um, I'm amenable with all you say. That I think we just need a draft that would, it would that that we can can fall in on. I mean, I agree with the comments that you've made, both of you. Okay, Michelle, I know you have a lot of experience with this, and it can be tricky. Do Do you yeah, have any reactions? So I had some thoughts. I sent like sort of a um, correct changes to Aaron, but I'll try and just say them here. So I think like Aaron or somebody said, one should probably be like the conservation of land and water resources, right? Cause that's our primary mission. And also one in five could probably be combined the community aspects. Mm -hmm. um, I really would like to see the animal and plant natural resources be separated from water and land and just be conservation of 
like native species for, you know, in an ecologically beneficial manner or something rather than sustainable. Um, I just don't like animals being called natural resources. I think that's old school. Um, so other than that, um, I thought maybe like instead of one in five, we could sort of have like, um, or maybe the education of the community, the encouragement of community participation, maybe like promote and facilitate the use of lands by the public too. Mm -hmm. um, so some reordering, maybe take out human stewardship. I think that's pretty obvious. <laughs> it's not your stewardship, but um, yeah, like instead of maybe what was the sustainable manner, maybe like ecologically beneficial or something mm -hmm. less ambiguous than sustainable because that can go a lot of places. Um, I'm, try I'm also trying to think about like a good way to have this conversation and if it's like an on paper conversation, cause this could be kind of a long one, but like maybe, uh, you know, putting something up on the board and talking about it repeatedly mm -hmm. rather than just looking at this and hashing it out. You know, this is a tough forum to do this kind of thing. And we're, we really can't like share documents outside of the meeting. Um, yeah, so and I don't want you guys to feel like you've got to nail this down tonight definitively. I think it was more just to kind of get the creative juices flowing. And um, if anybody else has comments to share or suggestions, feel free. What I can do is take what you've suggested and or if you want to send me markups, I can try to consolidate everything so that it's kind of in a, you know, a functional um, state, you know, functional mission statement. And then um, we're hoping that at the next meeting, we're going to have the draft mission statement for the I'm, I'm sorry, the draft land use policy for you guys to review. And um, hopefully we'll be scheduling a public hearing soon on that as well. So we'll have a lot more time to sort of wordsmith it, I guess. Okay. Yeah. And I mean, in terms of the feedback that Fletcher and I just shared, I think it's pretty in line with what Michelle might have sent you. So um, maybe, yeah, if you could, Aaron, if you'd be willing to incorporate um michelle's track changes um and send it back out i can try to be more responsive um yeah and what jenna get closer. but i do, I do agree oh just and also what you guys just said because that was helpful too but um things i hadn't thought about i think the mission statement is super important though and that we will come back to it time and time again so i think it's worth our time definitely agree I wonder if we, and like, I can look into this too, like for fed work, we have access to like this whiteboard function where you can like actually share and like see things on teams. Like we use teams, not zoom, but I wonder if there's anything like that, that the town has access to Aaron, where we could in the next meeting, like spend, we can limit the time, but spend just some time if we can all see us kind of retyping and re you know, editing in real time in the meeting that might at some point, that's probably going to be the most efficient mm -hmm. <laughs> way to finalize it, but. Okay. I, uh, think sure. there's a, I think there's a whiteboard function in Zoom. Do we have access to it in this forum though? I don't know. I don't know. I don't I'm not, I'm sure. like, Zoom is not one of my skills, so. I can, so I can I talk to IT one. and ask them. Yeah, I that would be great. Is. Okay. Sounds good. Does anybody so else we'll have do, ideas like, on it? Or one more remote. I one more remote revision round and then maybe we can do a limited in-person edit session. Yeah, just whatever edits you guys send me, just send them only to me so that it's not yeah. members communicating. Yep. Perfect. And yeah, Michelle, I 100% agree with you that this is this is worth the time. Um, okay, did any other commissioners have anything to add? No, I mean, I just agree with what's been said. I think it's a lot here. So I think to the extent that we can consolidate it, it's better. I think it's, I think the, the tough thing with the mission statement is to get it as concise as possible. I think it's much easier to write something that's long, um, yeah. but to get it into something sort of very short is much more challenging, so. Agreed. Okay, thanks, Laura. Thanks everybody. Sounds good. That sounds like a small step forward. <laughs> Are you okay with that, Aaron? Yeah, no, that's great. Okay, cool.
So sorry, I'm just checking the agenda. What was our first hearing? 7.30, we have five more minutes. Is there anything else that you'd want to cover in the five minutes, Aaron? Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, let me just <laughs> let me just see what I can, where I can jump here. Hold on one second. Uh, <clears throat> you get a new yeah. land manager um, assistant. We we did hire um, Tyler back, which I'm really happy about because Tyler's really? awesome. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, okay, so. Um, these two items we could just get crossed off um, the list, basically um, emergency certification and request for certificate of compliance, both of these items. Um, the emergency cert was approved by Dave, just removal of three trees, uh, hazardous trees, a uh, gentleman's property who lives on, he abuts Puffer's Pond. And um, so I went out and did a site visit, though that's all set. And then the 273 Leverett Road I visited today, that site's all set. If you guys wanna see pictures, let me just stop um, really quick, see if I can grab the photos. I did upload them, I saw it, but um, I can share the pictures with you. Site is fully stable. Um, bear with me while I switch and jump around screens here. Um, 273 Leverett Road, I pulled the permit out of the archives and everything is above board here. Um, the one thing I talked to the landowner about, he was doing some hand pruning of invasives in the back, um, which I thought was fine because we've definitely given the green light for people to do that before. So looked great. And uh, I would, I'll just go back to the screen in case anyone wants to motion. You're muted there, Jen. I'm just looking for a motion to ratify the emergency certification for um, 64 Mill Street. I'll, I'll move to ratify the certification for 64 Mill Street. Second. second. We'll get the second to Leroy. It's on the top of my screen. <laughs> uh, so voice vote, Leroy. Aye. Michelle. Aye. Fletcher. Aye. Laura. Aye. Larry. Aye. And I'm an aye. And then we need a motion um, to issue a cert complete certificate of compliance for 273 Leverett Road. Uh, move to uh, for the certificate of compliance for 273 Leverett Road. Seconded. Yeah. Okay. Seconded was Leroy. Voice vote, Leroy. Aye. Laura. Aye. Larry. Aye. Michelle. Aye. Fletcher. Aye. And I'm an aye. Okay. What do you want to jump into next here, Aaron? Um, so I Okay, so just a couple things. So there, I think we should, I, I know Michelle had some comments on um, one of the forest cutting plans or both the forest cutting plans. Um, so I don't think we should really talk about that right now because that might take a little more time. But I just wanted to point out to people that for this meeting, there's quite a bit of correspondence in the um, uh, OneDrive folder. So if any, if everybody could just have a look at that um, and, then, and then the forest cutting plans as well. Um, uh, a couple site visits, um, extra ones this week, uh, that, and just as an FYI that there's a proposal that DPW is going to be bringing at some point to do a replacement of the um, Plumbrook um, culvert that goes underneath Potwine Lane. Um, I've been, I've, I visited the site with Beth and talked with her about that this past week. And then I uh, did a site visit out at Trillium Way, which there was, it was for an, um, an erosion control inspection to start work and that um, the location of the, the fence was in the wrong place. So they're hopefully going to be correcting that. Um, <clears throat> Southeast Commons, we've had some issues with the um, submission of monitoring reports. And I know, um, Erica Larner has been working for um, Amir, who's the owner, um, and she might have, I know she's, she's working to try to um, 
get us updates. I don't know if it was a matter of um, not having a contract to do the inspections or if it was, you know, the weather that it was sort of presumed because the, you know, a lot of the time the ground was frozen that we wouldn't require monitoring reports during that period. But I have been in communication with her, um, letting her know that we're, you know, we, there have been many weeks that have passed now without monitoring reports, and we need to start getting them on a consistent basis for that site. Thanks for doing that, Erin. Um, this is concerning. I just would ask if you can keep me posted on any responses, because I would love to see those inspection reports become come in regularly on a weekly basis, um, especially now that we're in moving into fast melt mud season. Um, that site has a lot of sensitive resource areas around it. Um, so we need to know what's going on there. Yeah, go ahead, Fletcher. So they, they switched uh, contract engineer co contractors or wasn't this like a... Um... No, it was their inspector. So they have a, oh, a environmental different... inspector who submits the monitoring reports. Oh, that's separate than um, the design folks. Okay. Correct, yep. My bad, got it. Yeah, but thanks for being proactive about that, Aaron, and hopefully um, those will get back on track. Yes. Is there a like uh, time at which we move to the next step of enforcement there? Well, that's sort of up to you guys. Um, I I checked in, uh, I checked in like, where are the reports, where are the reports? And then um, I know there was some communication between her and the owner, like to make sure that she was getting paid and, you know, that sort of thing. Um, so I think that was a lot of it. Um, but, and also I think there was a, you know, a freeze, a deep freeze kind of period, which, you know, I understand, but we have had some, you know, like 40 degree days where it was raining in between the freeze. And so for me, I've had some sketchy, you know, just checking in on sites that where there, there have definitely been move it, movement of material um, that I've identified on some sites. So just it doesn't seem to matter like what the like, freezing conditions are. It's almost like our climate is in a constant freeze thaw cycle during the winter now. And it's been an observation of mine for like the last three years that there is really no deep freeze that lasts all winter. Yep. Okay. Well, unless there's a commissioner that feels like we should put a hard, unless anyone feels like we need to put a hard deadline on this, I'm okay with monitoring and continuing communication um, with the goal of getting those weekly monitoring reports back online. And if this is still an issue at the next meeting, moving forward to the next step of enforcement after that. Um, does anyone, is, is that okay with everyone? Does anyone have any comments or concerns? Seeing a lot of... I like the timeline okay. that you put forth, yep. Okay, thanks, Michelle. Okay, great. Um, that was productive. Thanks for that productive seven, <laughs> squeezing those into seven minutes, Erin. Um, so let's do our um, 7.30 hearing. Let me open the RDR. Oh, it's the notice of intent. Okay, sorry. I thought we were doing Amherst Survival Center next. So this oh, it is, should. This is the, go ahead. Um, did, did I get the order wrong in my slides? Yeah, I think you're right, Jen. It's a, I think you're right that it is the, um, the NOI was first, you're right. I, I okay. mixed up the order in my slides, so my apologies. So we haven't opened this NOI, this hearing yet. Do we? Correct, I would just continue it. Okay. Just just, just say that it's it's going to be opened at the, um, uh, sorry, wow, March 23rd meeting. I know, yeah, okay. <laughs> at 7 um, all right, so I just need a motion to continue the notice of intent for Berkshire Design Group on behalf of Valley Property Management and Killerine Properties for renovation of existing house, removal of existing barn and restoration plantings in the riverfront area of the Mill River at 80 Pine Street. And note that we'll open this um, hearing officially at the next meeting on March 23rd. So moved. Second. Thank you. Voice vote, Michelle. Aye. Larry. Aye. Roy. Aye. Fletcher. Aye. Laura. Aye. 
and I'm an I. Okay, so the next one is 735 and I have 735 exactly. So this is a request for determination, the Amherst Survival Center for installation of a generator and propane tank with associated concrete pad and piping in the 100 foot buffer zone at 138 Sunderland Road. Um, Aaron, are we expecting, we have a lot of attendees. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, so if you're in attendance at the meeting and you're planning on representing this um, and uh, this RDA, please raise your hand. I see Sam. Yeah, it should be you. Sam. Okay. Um, so Sam, I'm promoting you to a panelist so you can join us. Um, oh. Hey, hey there's Sam. Hi, we can see you and hear you. Perfect. Uh, <laughs> Thank sorry, you. first time on the Wellens Commission. Um, anyways, you're on the behalf of the Amherst Survival Center to request termination. Um, as we said, yeah, for Sam, hold on. I have to like formally open the hearing. So give me two seconds. I just have to read this. Um, so the public hearing is now called to order. This hearing is being held as required by the provisions of Chapter 131, Section 40 of the General Laws of the Commonwealth, an act relative to the protection of wetlands as most recently amended in Article 3.31's Wetlands Protection under the Town of Amherst General Bylaws. Um, so sorry, let's try that again. Sam, thank you for being here. If you wouldn't mind just introducing yourself and giving us a quick overview of um, the application, that would be great. Uh, no problem. Uh, so my name is Sam Guerin. I'm the operations coordinator at the Amherst Survival Center and requesting, we are requesting determination for construction of a uh, 30 kilowatt generator and associated propane tank and necessary pads and piping uh, within the 100 foot buffer zone of the abutting intermittent stream uh, at 138 Sunderland Road. Um, we expect site work to be relatively minimal. Um, this is within the boundaries of already existing construction. Um, and I can bring up aerial photographs if, if necessary, but I know that Aaron has um, uh, seen what was associated with the application. Yeah, so um, it looks like we don't have any major concerns with the proposed work. Um, Aaron, would you mind just quickly sharing some site visit photos? I don't mind for some reason. Whenever I'm in share, share mode, it will not allow me to um, share the photos from OneDrive. Um, bear with me just one moment. There we go. Um, so I, it's kind of weird. Like I, I was taking pictures just to show you guys that there's, there is fencing sort of all around the survival center in the back so it's not as if this is going like in a you know um an untouched uh um area where there is no th this is looking out from the fencing toward the stream so you see where the stream is located but there's um there's multiple fences around the property and my understanding and sam can probably help a little bit more with this is that it's going sort of on the parking lot side of this sitting area. Is that correct, Sam? That's correct. Yeah. Uh, so there's a, a slight incline in between where we're looking at the picnic tables here and where you can see the vehicles. Um, yeah. So on the, the flat of that hill, essentially. This this area here is what I was sort of envisioning, right, um, based on the plan. Does that seem That's right? That's right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's between a parking area and like a, you know, picnic lunch kind of area. Um, and when would you guys plan to do this work, Sam? Uh, this would be near end of calendar year 2022. Um, oh, okay. So not for a while. Okay. Um, I guess the main focus or main question I'd have is just man making sure we have good sediment and erosion controls in place during the work, just while. Um, dirt is exposed that close to an intermittent stream. Um, so I guess Aaron has some comments here, just installation of a straw waddle at the limit of work while you're doing the work and making sure you're stabilizing any open ground um, at the end of the work, which I'm sure you would do anyway, since it would probably run into your parking lot if you didn't. Um, but those, I guess, would be my two main comments. 
commissioners, did anyone else have any questions or, or concerns here? All right. Well, Aaron, any, anything further that I didn't cover? Concerns? No, I think this is a really super simple one. Agreed. Okay. Well, Sam, thanks for taking the time to, to come before us with this. Um, we appreciate it. And so it sounds like commissioners were looking for a motion to issue a negative determination. Would anyone be willing to, to re make and read that motion? Sure. I'll make a motion uh, to move to issue a negative determination of applicability condition under the Wetlands Protection Act by checking box three and a positive determination of applicability under the local bylaw by checking box five. Second. Larry's on the second. Voice vote, Larry. Aye. Leroy. Aye. Laura. Aye. Michelle. Aye. Fletcher. Aye. And I'm an aye. Okay, thank you, Sam. Best of luck with the project. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you, Sam. Good job on the application. Yeah. Good night. <laughs> All right, great. Sorry, just pulling up the agenda. So the next RDA is at 7.40 and I have 7.41. Um, so we can open that RDA. Let's see who, well, I'll just open the hearing first. Um, so this is a request for determination, Larner Consulting on behalf of Dan Louie, Louie Builders for, or Lewis or Louie. I'll get that corrected. Builders for tree clearing in the 100 foot buffer to bordering vegetated wetland and an intermittent stream um, for construction and associated work, site work for two single family homes on zero Tuckerman Lane and zero Kingman Road. And note that this is an after the fact permit filing. Um, so the public meeting is now called to order. This meeting is being held as required by the provisions of chapter 131, section 40 of the general laws of the Commonwealth and act relative to the provision of wetlands as most recently amended and article 3.31, the wetlands protection under the town of Amherst general bylaws. Um, so if um, you're in attendance and you um, are participating and would like to represent um, the applicant here, Erica, I see you, I'm gonna promote you to panelist. Dan, um, could you raise your hand if you wanna be moved in or? Erica, maybe you can tell me if I should move Dan in. I see him. Oh, there he is. Okay. Did you do it, Eric? Oh, no. Okay, I got it. Dan should be here, too. Yep. Yep. If we can have Dan in, that'd be great. Great. I'll just wait for him to... Dan, we see that you're here, but we can't see you or hear you. Try again, Dan. Oh. There you go. Hello. Um, give me the pronunciation of your last name so I get it right. Lewis. Lewis. Okay. You got Sorry it. about that. Um, welcome, Erica and Dan. Thanks for being here. Um, would one of you be willing to give us, uh, or first maybe you should both just introduce yourselves and then um, whoever is gonna give us kind of a five minute overview of the project, uh, that would be great. Sure, I'm Dan Lewis, I'm the owner of the property on both lots and I'm the builder and Erica is my representative for the wetlands. Wonderful, um, and I'm Erica Liner, I'm the wetlands consultant. Um, uh, Mr. Lewis reached out to me after he had cleared two lots at the intersection on Tuckerman Lane and Kingman. Um, and he had gone into the, uh, excuse me, the about 75 feet into the buffer zone to an intermittent stream and BBW, um, the way that the two uh, resource areas intersect, it hits about 75 feet into both resource areas and they um, weave back and forth amongst each other. So they, he had given me a call to come out to that site. There's two single family home lots out there. One of them does have some jurisdiction cast on it from the intermittent stream that is mapped on Mass Mapper and the USGS, as well as the BBW that's associated with it. 
Um, the upper lot um, to the north, uh, to the eastern portion of that site, there is a swale that is alongside the railroad tracks. I know that Aaron had asked a question about that. Um, and I did actually investigate it because the first time I was out on the site, um, there was standing water. And when I went out again, the plants um, were not predominantly hydric, nor were the soils. So the upper lot would be outside of the commission's jurisdiction based on this uh, delineation. And the outer lot, the uh, clearing that was um, occurred prior to the filing would come within 60 feet of the resource areas. And the um, extended clearing that would go with the um, limit of work and the silt fence that is proposed would go within approximately 50 feet of, the, of both resource areas. The bin building envelope is proposed to be within 75 feet of the resource areas. Yeah, I was just going to say, sorry, I was muted. Um, that was kind of a whirlwind overview. Um, a little difficult to follow. I did have, Aaron is now sharing a site map, which I did have pulled up, but we might have to run through some of that again. Um, so I'm reading, <laughs> give me a second. Okay, so the building is within the 100 foot buffer. Of BBW and it borders the 100 foot intermittent stream buffer. What's that red line? A limit of work. Limit of work is almost up to the 50 foot intermittent stream buffer or parallel to or parallel to the 50 foot BBW buffer and almost up to the 50 foot intermittent stream buffer. Okay. Uh, there's a lot to unpack here. Um, Real quick, you can see this from Henry Street, right? If you're looking across the tracks. Okay, I was just getting my bearings here. Okay, um, Aaron, maybe would you mind orienting us with some site visit photos? I would be happy to. Um, so, um, when you pull into the cul-de-sac, um, and you look out, uh, sort of to the right, there's an abutter on one side. So this is kind of just looking, looking down. And I, I got this so that you can sort of see that as soon as you, um, on the, on the right side there, it drops down. So there's a slope, um, almost immediately on the edge of the cul-de-sac. And then this is, if I sort of turn to my left, looking at, directly towards Henry street, that is what I see. And so it's, the lot, then there's um, in the back of the lot, there's the railroad track, and then there's Henry Street on that side. Um, so this is facing down toward the intermittent stream. This is the area of the lot that it was cleared looking down towards the, the woods. And then the clearing did extend down the slope. Um, and then this is just a photo. There's, there is a, um, an outlet, which isn't shown on the, um, plan delineation. Um, and I assume that this is probably a stormwater outfall, but I'm not entirely sure um, what that what that water is from. This is looking um, to the east, I believe, um, just toward the delineation, trying to capture those flags. You can see one sort of right in the center of the photo. And then this is looking left toward where the intermittent stream um, moves through the property. This is again, the stormwater. Um, this is, <clears throat> I took a photo to the left just so you could sort of see the slope, the clearing on the slope. And I think that's that's probably my biggest concern on this site is the fact that there's um, a slope that's been cleared. Um, and then it, I believe that the limit of work is proposed to extend down onto that slope, which is a little bit worrisome uh, kind of wishing that we could keep them up on top of the um, flat um, plateau of the lot and restore this, this steep um, slope so that it protects the resource area a little bit better. And you can see the stumps cut there. This is looking oh. out, oh, go ahead, I'm sorry. Sorry, so back on the picture of the slope. So if I'm squaring this picture with the plan view map we saw, 
the 50 foot buffer is about at the toe of this slope? Approximately, yes. Okay. Is that, is that track, Aaron, for you? Yeah, I mean, what's, so what's hard is, um, like this is one site we're having sort of the limited work staked out and the house staked out would be really useful to get sort of that context of where things fall just because of the sloping nature and also the vegetation it's really hard to get a sense of um the offsets from the bvw and also because you have bvw and you have the stream so sort of you know where those those buffers fall um it's a little it, like like uh, Erica said they kind of it kind of weaves so weaves through the landscape so it's a little hard to tell where that buffer falls. Okay, sorry, um, keep going, Erin. Sorry to interrupt. So this is turning back around and facing north, um, and so this is standing on the lot, which is um, so there's there's oops, sorry, okay, took me off. Um, there's two lots that are side by side, and so this is looking at them the long way. Um, and then back down the slope, back down the slope, you can see the railroad tracks there. Um, and that's, you can see just it's a right square in the center of the photo. If you look directly down from the railroad tracks, you see a dark spot. That's where the culvert comes out from under the railroad tracks and flows, uh, I believe it's east. And then this is, these are some photos of the swale that runs along the railroad track. This is a photo at the top of the slope looking down um just to give you a sense of the, the steepness of it and and this material is moving on the site right now you can you can see that it's moving and start there's starting to be some accumulation of sediment right on the edge of that slope so um re regardless of whether the commission acts tonight or whatever moves forward i definitely think that it would be a good idea to get some erosion controls out there as soon as possible so aaron just real quick so that the stream below can you see mm -hmm. the dark, the dark ribbon? That's the stream. Right? That line, that line yep. is the stream. Okay. Yep, Thank exactly. You. Yep. Um, and one more question, um, Erica, when was this delineation done? Like what time of year? Very, very late fall, uh, December 17th. It was the last warm week before we got frozen ground conditions. And I know because I took the day off to do the field work. So okay. because it was the last chance I was going to get for before frozen ground. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, but yeah, so it was very, very, very late fall, like three days before winter. Okay. Okay. Um, commissioners, I want to open it up. Um, clarifying questions and comments. Um, yeah, Michelle, go ahead. Erica, you said uh, the tree cutting was done 75 feet into the 100 foot buffer. Um, is that Aaron? I see in our notes the violation of Wetlands Protection Act and lo local wetland bylaw. Is, is that that? It is yes, and and this um, RDA was meant to um, res respond to that violation and to permit the violations, and then um, the additional uh, by right. Well, the I'm uh, sorry, the not by right. The um, additional clearing would be um, to the performance standards for. Um, Inland Bank and um, BVW as well. Okay. Other questions? Can you just go back to that, the, uh, the original plans that we saw before the pictures, please? So, and just to give you perspective on, there's there's a lot here which appears to be completely outside of our jurisdiction. Um, it's just the the lot that's on the corner of the cul-de-sac that's in jurisdiction. And Erica, do you? House, oh, I'm sorry, sorry. Go ahead. Well, I just wanted the house. So that orange is the house lot. Is the proposed house? The, the orange is meant to be the building envelope in that we don't have a set footprint. Um, the Lewis builders would be building this and potentially could be looking at a varying set of footprint layouts. So the intent would be to cover potential locations of the house, but I seriously doubt that they're looking at a 10,000 square foot home. Um, 
that it would be to cover the potential for varying locations or layouts of the um, actual footprint of the house for, um, you know, varying entrances and appearance ways. Yeah, that's, that's like correct. House, there, uh, we're, yeah, we're looking at like a 1900 square foot home that that's what we're looking at there, which is not going to consume that building envelope at all. Yeah, that was my question. Thanks. And um, and I can actually um, and I actually say that I believe that Aaron's comment about the um, erosion up at the top of the slope is a decent one. We do have a um, a silt fence uh, proposed at the toe of slope, but that I think that potentially that we could um, suggest that if there is any kind of gulling or movement of sedimentation, that um, a coconut fiber matting or um, erosion control matting of some kind be implemented as a secondary backup if there's any kind of um, rip, 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 I can't speak today, I'm so sorry folks, um, gullies or, or you know, the R word. Rip, rills, rills. Thank, rills. Thank you. But it's I guess my, <laughs> to, to what you just said, Erica, what, what is the point of, go, of disrupting that whole slope? What is, what is the intention or the reasoning for tearing up that whole slope and ripping out the vegetation? In my discussions with Mr. Um, Mr. Lewis, the, the intention is not to actually do so. It's again, to provide the most flexibility that should uh, the, that this would be the extent of the lot clearing that was intended, the tree work's been done, but that I wanted to provide a, a natural break point for the silt fence instead of trying to fight with the slope. And that additionally, should any rotation need to be happen, happen a tree or two to provide safety to a foundation, um, that something lines up different with the um, side of the, sorry, the side property setbacks, um, and they need to do a touch more extra work. I wanted to provide as much flexibility for on-site construction um, to go smoothly without coming back after the fact and saying, sorry, we had a violation again. Um, so I wanted to make sure that we provided the most flexibility there so we didn't have an accidental violation again. Um, okay, so this is a stepping back a little bit. Did you do any, like, so that can, that, I don't know if it's a stormwater outfall or like that concentrated surface water flow, any idea where that comes from and was it included in the mapping? I couldn't find um, online information about where that might have come from, from what I could look at uh, as the actual uh, material of the, the piping, the PVC, the, the width and, and the timing of the put it, when the subdivision was put in. Um, it, it appears that it would be um, drainage from the streets and that it does appear that the there's been rip, um, sorry trap rock placed in that location again to freshen up as a stormwater outfall. Um, so if I can't find any publicly available records or I couldn't, I'm sure they do exist, uh, but I couldn't find them to, to find out what it was, but it did based on subdivision timing and the PVC pipe timing, it looked like they were both in the eighties. May, may I, may I just ask um, how many of the commissioners went on site and viewed this uh, site, viewed the lot itself? Anybody on the commission went on the site and viewed the site itself? So um, the, I didn't actually schedule a site visit for the commission to come out and see this. Um, okay. And part of that was because, well, it's, I mean, the commission could come out and see this anytime, but I- okay, So um, the commission itself could come out and see this anytime itself, right? Right. Okay. Has anyone on the commission come out and looked at this lot? I think she answered your question. I think she hasn't scheduled a site visit. So the answer right now is no. Okay. I mean, I, so, and part of that is that I think, so for me personally, I think that there's some outstanding issues with this application. Um, and I don't know if that's something that you want me to, um, to talk about. Yeah, I think the first thing I would say is um, we need to do some Thing immediately um, to stabilize the site. Um, so regardless of what is decided here and what the next step is, I'm concerned about what looks like some sediment collecting and heading towards that slope. Um, 
So unless any commissioners disagree with me, I think like immediate action is that we need to stabilize or protect um, that slope. Um, and then Aaron, do you want to get into any further information needs here? Yeah, yeah. And I did send some of these to um, to Erica before the meeting. So she um, could be a little prepared for kind of what my questions were going to be. Um, and she did touch on some of these questions already, like with regard to looking at the uh, swale along the railroad tracks and investigating whether or not there was any indicators of hydrology. I didn't suspect that there would be, but I was just curious if that had been looked at. Um, I um, mentioned already the slope issues. I mean, so there's a couple of things that occurred to me about this site and just because of the topography um, and the nature of it is that as soon as this site is opened up, um, that there would probably be peeling the topsoil off of the top of it and pulling the stumps. And in doing so, they would be stockpiling a large amount of material somewhere on the site. And my concern is it being that the, the site plan as it was submitted to us, they could push that material right up to the limit of work. They could push it right down the slope towards the wetland and stockpile basically wherever they wanted. And they could leave it for to sit there for three years if they wanted to in over the course of the life of the permit. And I have a, a concern about that, that we should identify where the material that's taken off or the material that the topsoil on the site where it's gonna be located for the duration of construction so that we can keep that material um, away from the resource area. And then also have some um, mitigation there to protect it. Um, I've and I can say immediately that we are quite happy to say that all stockpiles will be outside of the 100 foot buffer zone and um, that it, that could easily be a condition um, for a negative determination is that we would keep all stockpiles outside of the 100 foot buffer. And, and there's plenty of non-jurisdictional space for both lots. Okay. Um, so as far as the construction of this house, because of the topography, because of the slope, and also because there's a neighbor that's actually downslope of this site that stands to um, be sort of on the receiving end of a lot of drainage from the lot, um, I have some concerns about the existing contour versus the proposed contour, how it's going to be graded on the site, um, and also once it is graded and the house is constructed, what they're doing with water, um, a lot of times just how um, downspouts are positioned can really cause uh, a lot of issues in terms of um, the rills and gullies that Erica had mentioned, they can carve, carve out and cause issues. And if we don't have any requirements for those areas to be stabilized, that water could be directed directly towards the slope. It could be directed down towards the neighbor. Um, it could, you know, they can be put underground, uh, found um, French drains, they could be put right up to the limit of work. You know, there, there are issues that could come about um, during construction, which we have zero control over if we just say negative determination on this house footprint. Um, they could literally put the house on the entire house footprint, um, develop that entire area. So I think it would be useful to have more detail um, and to Erica's point, like, like, let's say somebody spec, you know, they decide to, to do like a spec house, like somebody wants to buy it, they want to have the builder build a house, well, then they want to do a deck, then they want to do a shed, they want to do a patio, they want to do a pool, you know, there's all these additional factors in here, we don't have anything on a plan, so anything that's in that building envelope is fair game. Um, and then just a couple comments from the my site visit and I, you know, I shared um, the site visit photos, but um, the outlet at the Toa Slope, which we already talked about, um, the staking, and this is something that um, visiting the site, I was like, wow, we, you know, it'd be really useful to see where the limit of work would be staked um, in this case. And um, again, the comment about erosion controls. Okay, that's helpful, Erin, thanks. Um, so if, if I can address any of those concerns, I'd be happy to whenever you have a moment. 
Okay, well, um, let's talk about how we want to do this there. I have to open for public questions and comments and we have an attendee with a, a raised hand. So I should give our attendees a chance. So why don't Erica, why don't you um, give us some feedback on those thoughts and then we can open it up to the public for comments and questions before we figure out how to move forward. Fantastic. Um, okay, so the um, <clears throat> So the only concern would be truly about the development of the area um, would be whether or not there would be directing runoff during the grading towards the resource area. Um, it would we wouldn't need to be able to concern as a be concerned with this as a regulatory issue as to whether or not to be graded towards the neighbors. That would be not legal, but also a civil matter to be worked out among. Um, you think. Be between um, neighboring lots, not between the commission. Um, as a regulatory matter, um, we can ask uh, Mr. Lewis if he's planning on doing any other grading of the lot. Um, and that I would point out that clearing to the 50 foot line is within the performance standards and that under an RDA submission, we're asking whether or not this is an impact to a resource area. With the silk funds proposed and with the performance standards being met, I struggle to see that we need finer detail in terms of stormwater management or the actual footprint of the house, as opposed to giving you the approximate location no closer than locations um, that allows us to work and plan ahead. Um, a notice of intent would appropriate time to have a footprint stormwater design. Um, and this doesn't meet the standard of a notice of intent as it falls perfectly within the performance standards. And this is um, a style of plan that is regularly approved by the commission um, when this is such a minimal amount of impact within the, the buffer zones. Okay, noted. Um, let's come back to um, some of those points. Erin, I would love your in input on kind of meeting performance standards and whether we could move to an NOI in this case. Um, but I do wanna, give everyone in who's attending from the public a chance to ask any questions or make any comments first. Um, and I noticed there's a lot of people in attendance and we have a lot of other issues in the meeting. So I'm not sure if all these people are here for this hearing, but mm -hmm. um, if a lot of these people are, I just wanna say thank you for being here. Um, we have a very full agenda. We wanna hear what people have to say, but we ask that you limit your comments um, and questions to things that are, um, relevant and within the jurisdiction of the Conservation Commission. So our job here is to protect the resource um, our, you know, and there's not much we can do um, outside of that. So please keep your comments and questions relevant to what we have jurisdiction over. But also I'd ask that you introduce yourself and then try to limit your questions and comments to about two minutes if possible. Um, so with that, Brenda, I see you've had your hand up for a while here. I'm going to allow you to talk. Um, so if you could introduce yourself and ask any uh, questions or comments, that would be great. Yes, hello, I'm Brenda Bushhouse. And I just wanted to add that Lewis Builders never took out a permit before removing the trees. Abutters were not notified. We did not have the benefit of a public hearing. When we received the abutters notice for the wetlands determine, determination, that was a first notice we had received about any of this construction. So our neighbors are here to complain, first and foremost, about that to the builder himself because he is here, that we deserved a public hearing and you needed to hear from the abutters. We, you've cleared the train tracks, now our houses shake. I have cracks on my ceilings, I have nail pops. Okay, thank and you. And I realize, that. okay, I'll move to what's relevant here. Yeah. So. The issue here is that the draining is critically important and that should be written into the permit. I also think that because this is another filing after the fact that this needs to be put on hold, we need to have further study and that I would request on behalf of my neighbors that this, this gets tabled until we as the butters have any chance whatsoever to do our homework. We just found out about this. Thank you. Thanks, Brenda. Um, I see another hand up. Do you want, I'm gonna allow you to talk. 
We should be able to hear you now if you would introduce yourself and ask any questions or make any comments. Jiwan, are you there? How do I do this? <laughs> oh, now we hear you. Great, thank you. Yeah, um, thanks for being here. Okay, thank you. So I live right next to these lots down the slope and I have to second Erin's comment on the concerns for the uh, erosion because uh, we would be directly on the uh, receiving end of it. And like Brenda was saying, Already our house, literally things in the cover shake. I have, you know, nails popping, all of that. So it seems to be a common problem. But my question is, who did the land survey? I was really shocked to see the uh, working men coming really close to what I thought, you know, our property. I mean, we have never done that officially, but how did the pink ribbons appear? Uh, may, may I answer that? Um, well, sure. Let me just first, um, Dan, if you don't mind. So no, what, we're talking, what we're talking about here, um, Juwan, is not necessarily the building permit process. Those pink flags are delineating the resources uh, that are protected under the Wetlands Protection Act for the state of Massachusetts and the town of Amherst. Um, so those were delineated by Erica um, okay. on December 17th of, was that 2021, Erica? Okay this past December. Um, so yes, those are slightly yes, different technical things. So Dan, do you wanna go ahead? Do you have more information? Sure. Um, so when I purchased the property, we had the property surveyed. We indicated all four corners of the property of the property uh, lines. And then we had the property clear for our inside our building envelope. That's how we proceeded. And who was the surveyor? I think that was the question. Yeah, sure. Uh, Harold, Ethan, and Associates out of uh, Hadley. They're the ones that did a survey on this. Thank you. And there's probably a survey as part of your building permit, Dan, which is probably uh, absolutely which the building permit, public. which the building permit has not been um, issued yet because it has not been turned in yet. Okay. Because after we cleared the lots, this whole thing came up, so that's why we're in the middle of this process here. Okay. Okay. Great. Thanks. No, of course. Um, so may I ask why the trees were clear before a permit was obtained? Because that is a normal process. So you can clear the trees and see what you have for a building envelope on your land. You have a building envelope that you have to clear up to. So that that's what we did. At issue here is the proximity of that clearing to the resource delineated by those pink flags. Just sure, so understand. I understand that. Yeah, yeah. no, no, sorry, it's like clarifying no. that for um, you, members you, of the You also got to realize when we purchased this land, we clarified with the real estate agent on this and we um, contacted the Conservation Commission and there wasn't any issue at that time. And then when we cleared a lot, this became an issue. Mm -hmm. We have those emails through our uh, through the realtor, so we're going through the normal process of this, which is fine. Okay, great, thanks, um, Juwan. Did you have any other questions? I think that's that's it for me. Probably other people have questions. Yep. Okay, I'm gonna disable talking. I see the next on my list um, is Rosie. Rosie, I'm allowing you to talk. If you could introduce yourself. Hi, um, Rosie, Rosie McMahon. I live in the neighborhood. I actually walked down to the lot tonight and stood there uh, knowing this meeting was gonna happen. And I'll just um, say that finding out that those trees on the back of the lot on the slope and the proximity that that slope has to the wetlands is, is, uh, is very concerning. And you can't, you can't plant 50 year old trees and I don't care how much coconut, um, you know, uh, whatever that stuff is you referred to, Erica. It's, you know, those trees were serving a purpose and they're gone. And we're just going to be doing damage control. Uh, that, that's it. So I'm, I'm sorry about that. And, uh, and I hope that that's taken into consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay. Uh, we've got Joan, Rosie, if you've, um, unless you have more follow-up questions or comments, if you could lower your hand, that would be great. 
The last person I think I see on here is Amber. Should be able to talk. Yeah, hi everyone. Um, good evening. I'm Amber Cano Martin and I live in the neighborhood as well. I live on Grantwood Drive. Um, so I am not super familiar with this commission and I apologize for that. So I don't know what's in your jurisdiction and what's not besides what you've said. Um, but I think it counts for something that this builder, you know, went ahead and cut down a bunch of trees before they had a permit. Um, and I would like to think I live in a town where, where those regulations mean something. So I just am completely bewildered by this process and how this was allowed to happen. And, you know, I know you guys don't care, but people use those, you know, use those woods. Kids use them, dogs use them. I mean, mm. yeah, you bought the property, I understand that, but there are certain parts that do concern the town and that are resources that belong to the town. And I can't believe that you could just knock down those trees without any regard for that. So I'm here to support my neighbor who's the abutter. And just to say that was a resource the whole neighborhood used. So thanks a lot. Okay, thank you, Amber. Um, all right, uh, let's see. It looks like there's one more hand raised. Charlie? Yes, hi, I'm Charlie Schweik. I'm also in a butter. Uh, I'll just say that I second everything that all the other uh, neighbors have said. Um, they, they've captured my feelings about this as well. Okay, thanks for being here, Charlie. Um, and everyone who's made comments. Amber, Brenda, I see your hand up again. Um, if you still have a question or comment, leave, leave it up otherwise. Um, okay, Brenda, um, if you have another brief question or comment. My question for the commission is, what are the options here when somebody uh, removes trees without proper permitting? authority and it affects a wetlands. So what are the options here? And I would ask that the neighborhood needs time. We need time to research this. We have had no time to, to explore our options here. And yeah. so please just let us know what the potential is. Thank you. Yeah, um, so that's actually a great segue. And I just wanna say for those of you that are here, thank you for coming to this meeting. Um, the procedure that we're following is like the best that we can do to kind of address this in a way that does the best it can to um, protect the resource. Um, and so I'm gonna let Aaron, if that's Aaron, would you be okay with kind of explaining what our options are, kind of the different decision points um, along the rest of this process, just so people understand what, what's on the table? Of course. Um, so I'm just going to pull up the actual application while I'm talking because, um, on the application, um, it actually, it checked every single box, which, um, was, is a, a little unusual from what I usually see on an application. But, um, so what that means is that, um, here's the application and here's section B where it says determinations. And so these are the questions that the commission is being asked to make a determination on. So A is whether the area depicted on the plans referenced below is subject to the Wetlands Protection Act. So um, clearly there are areas on the site that are subject to the Wetlands Protection Act. Um, for B, whether the boundaries of the resource areas depicted on the plan um, and or maps referenced below are accurately delineated. So that's another question with this permit that the commission would have to answer. Um, whether the work depicted on the plans referenced below is subject to the Wetlands Protection Act. And what that is, there's, there's multiple options there, but the commission could say, yes, the, the work is subject to the Wetlands Protection Act, but it could be conditioned such that the work could move forward without having an impact on the wetlands. That's one option. So that's sort of like our, when we're issuing a negative determination, that's the one where we usually issue um, when everything is sort of, you know, in great shape and we're ready to proceed. Um, the commission could also say, uh, no, uh, or we think that the work is subject to the Wetlands Protection Act, but we cannot, um, we, we think that uh, a notice of intent application is necessary so that we can 
um, get more information, or maybe the commission doesn't feel that um, they, you know, might have questions about the potential for the project to impact a resource area. And so that's an option there too. And then the last box is whether um, the area and or work depicted on the plans is subject to the municipal bylaw, which it, it is. So that would be a positive as well. So um, the commission has to respond to each and every one of these questions and basically issue a, de a decision on it. Ordinarily, we see box C and D checked um, most of the time. And so that's why we usually see a negative determination with conditions and a, a positive determination under the bylaw. This one's just a little different than what we usually see, which is why I wanted to pull it up to clarify. And even stepping back further from that, it's worth saying, so if we issue a negative determination with conditions, the project moves forward according to those conditions. This is for the benefit of mem members of the public. If we decide that we can't issue a negative determination or we can't fully condition this in a way that would aptly or fully protect the resource, then we would ask for a, per a notice of intent, you know, a full permit application and a permit. Um, for this site so that we can adequately press, um, kind of protect the resource. So this is kind of a screening for a full permit at this point, um, just so members of the public understand kind of where we are in the arc of wetland permitting. Yeah, um, and I just, just from a um, sort of a regulatory standpoint too, I just wanted to point one thing out. So with an RDA, the commission has 21 days to respond. So um, in this case where we're, we're you know, we've got to, we've got to do something tonight. Uh, something has to be, a decision has to be rendered on this tonight, basically, um, unless the applicant was to, you know, give their um, uh, blessing for us to continue for some reason. So a, a reason might be to say, well, um, we'd like additional detail on how the drainage will be dealt with on the site, or we'd like additional detail on replanting the slope and stabilizing it and and or we'd like to adjust the limit of work line to keep it um, up on the plateau flat area of the site so that we're not impacting the slope um, and to adjust the plans accordingly. So it's really, there's a lot of give and take with the decision-making process tonight. Um, it's really where the applicant's coming from, sort of where they're at with the application if, if and also where the commission is at with the application and working together to try to iron that out. Yeah, so I wanna say again, hopefully that's a, thank you, Erin, and that hopefully that's a helpful overview for members of the public who joined us. We really appreciate you guys being here and being engaged in this process. We understand it's complicated and um, just know that we're doing our best to kind of make that clear to you and to spend our time to understand kind of what's going on at this site and how to best kind of protect the resources involved. Um, so with that, commissioners, um, we kind of need to get a sense of if we're moving in a direction of do we need more information to the point where we could potentially issue a negative determination or um, do we think that there's more here and we need to move in the direction of an NOI. So I guess what I'd love to hear from commissioners are additional information we need to evaluate um, this RDA. I just have a, a question. I was Sorry, Lori, one second. Um, or this is either Eric or Dan. You're talking with that slope and that um, the blast, the plans that you're saying with the envelope, was that on that slope, the building envelope? Was, were you planning on developing something on that slope? I just want, just for clarification, clarification Correct. purposes. That, that slope is the building envelope on that home. Th that slope is included on that building envelope that the plan Correct. we saw. Correct, that, pa that plateau is on the building envelope. The plateau, sure. I was asking, sure. but the slope. The sl the slope is on the on the back end of the property. Yeah, so it's within the limit of work, Fletcher. I think, but not within the building envelope. I was right. yeah, I was asking about the building envelope. That was, that was the question. Correct. Gotcha. Okay, and you were saying that you cleared the slope in order just to get an idea of, of the building envelope. No, uh, so we we cleared the trees, and the trees that were cleared on the backside, just so you guys mm -hmm. all understand, those trees were all leaning in towards the property. If they were leaning away from the property, if you look at the photos, you'll see trees that are leaning away towards the slope, which we did not touch. Any trees that were leaning significantly in towards the property, I mean significantly, like a 55 degree angle in 
we cut those down because they were going to encroach onto the home. So those were removed and we left the stumps behind. We are not touching those stumps on the, on the slope. Those stumps will stay on the slope. They will stabilize the slope. They will actually regrow from the stump and they will just continue to stabilize that slope. Those trees we are not touching at all. Okay, that's helpful, thanks. Other questions, Commission? Yeah, Leroy. I just had a thought, uh, I guess for the builder, I guess the total envelope right now is around 10,000 square feet and you're trying to use about 1,900. So is there any opposition to just make or shrinking that envelope? The, the, the home square footage is 1,900. That does not relate to the building envelope. I could take a two-story two home and make that 1,900 square feet, which makes that building envelope even smaller on the square footage. I'm aware that I was wondering if you were willing of your own accord. To am, I willing, the envelope. am I willing to shrink the building envelope? Correct. The building envelope is, a, is, a, is established by the zoning. I'm, I, I don't have the authority to shrink that building envelope. So maybe the question might be more, Leroy, the limit of work. So this goes back to the question that Aaron asked at the beginning of the meeting. It's just um, Erica, at, or sorry, Aaron asked Erica if, if there's any way or why the limit of work had to extend down that slope. Um, and I, you know, Erica said it was, you know, to be conservative, we don't wanna have to worry about, we wanna give you enough space to work. We don't have to worry about violations moving forward. But I think I would press that question mm -hmm. is, could we push given um, kind of the tenor of the commission and the amount of information we're looking for here, could we pull that limit of work back up to the top of the slope? I would say that the only thing about putting the limit of the work at the top of the slope is that the clearing has already been done. Um, it would probably be a bit disingenuous to suggest that it that it has not been. Um, that I think that it could be that the commission conditions that there is no stumping beyond the top, um, the edge of the plateau, so there is no pulling of stumps. I think that that would be a, a very appropriate. Um, condition um, to, to say that there's to be no more no stumping on the slope and that the slope it, slope is to be stabilized. Um, that I think that would be, those would be very appropriate um, you know conditions and I, like in the said Mr. Lewis is um, open to that. Um, that that's why I stated it when when the trees are leaning in it, it just becomes a hazard for the home but if you cut them down and you let the stumps stay they regrow from the stumps they do. And it, the stabilizes, other thing is, is that, it stabilizes the bank. Yeah. And the other thing is, is if the commission doesn't want to accidentally give permission to do further clearing where the limit of work where it is, um, there's something, you know, you could say, you can reference the plan that I submitted. And then again, as a condition in the negative three state that, you know, despite any plans that are submitted, there is to be no additional clearing. Um, and, and that that would be that, you know, no additional clearing is permitted than what exists on the site as of this day. Um, and, and that could prevent any further additional um, clearing. And I don't think that like Mr. Lewis has been stating he has no intention to do so. And um, my intention was to be as conservative to make sure that we are protected from accidentally moving something and, and, and not having covered it in the permit. Um, not doing our due diligence. So if we're getting feedback from Mr. Lewis that he has no intention to touch those areas, that I think that might be a good solution to protecting the slope and the resource area without any further alterations and not allowing more alterations accidentally um, through the permit. But if there's no intention to touch that slope, why not just pull the limit of work back? I mean, what are you gonna do outside of that area if it's not stumping and not clearing? You see what I'm saying? Like, if there's no oh. plan to work in there, like let let the let's make the limit of work accurate. I well, I guess because the reason why I would say is the limit of work the trees were already cut. That's why I wouldn't want to do that. I also would say that there's a potential likelihood of replanting. Um, there could be some sorry landscaping. There could be some potential for a deck that might go over just over the top of the slope. So I think that preserving some ability to put something over just over the top of the slope would be important for the construction of the home. But I think that changing where the limit of the work is towards the 50 foot, there's no intention to go any further. Um, 
then I, wait, see no, if there's I see a, no issue with that. If there's a deck over the limit of work, I mean, can a deck be outside of the building envelope? No, no, no. The building envelope goes to the limit of clearing. Right. Yep. And that is just down slope attached. So okay. the building envelope is meant to in include things such as the, you know, the potential for a deck for right. any grading for, you know, uh, a gravel drip line for, you know, for the roofs, things right. like that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Erin, did you have a comment or question? Yeah, I just wanted to say, so every commission is different, right? And every commission is different in what they require for a sim simple single family house project. Um, and every site is different. And on a case by case basis, the commission can review this and say, do we have the information necessary to make a determination here? This particular law is tricky because of the topography. And ordinarily you would see existing contours and proposed contours. And I think one of the things that's confusing about this visually on the plan is that it's difficult to see where that um, plateau is and where the slope starts. And so um, it, it would be more advantageous for me to see a complete plan that has existing topography, proposed topography, I wouldn't be um, opposed to, and I know like in the past, what we've done is we've placed like a house footprint um, that is larger than what they're proposing to do, but include a driveway, um, somewhat of a driveway, something, anything, even if it's bigger than what they're proposing to do, include some um, information on where the drainage is going so that we can determine that the drainage isn't just being downspouts aren't just being directed onto the slope and that there's no stabilization or anything going on there. Um, I think that there's additional information that would be useful to the commission to make sure that there aren't going to be any um, impacts to the resource area. So, so functionally, there is no way to do grading without pulling stumps. So if stumps are not allowed to be pulled and they're not gonna be pulled, and we're saying that we're more than happy to have the condition of no additional stump pulling, there is no functional way to grade down the slope. Um, that would allow for the building envelope as it is would allow for an overlook deck to look into the woods behind them and see the beautiful stream. Um, additionally, the proposed driveway would be outside of the commission's jurisdiction. Um, so provide, providing that information as a requirement would not be within the commission's um, purview. And I would say that the driveway would be outside of the 100 foot buffer, top of the plateau. That's nearly over half the acre. It's outside of the commission's jurisdiction. There's no wetlands up there. Um, so, and I'd say that under an RDA, it's extensive to require fully engineered plans for something that amounts to the potential of 10,000 squaring, uh, potential clearing, sorry, and we're saying we won't do any more. We're talking about then 5,000 square feet, 6,000 square feet of clearing in the outer 50 feet, um, 60 feet and out. Um, no additional work being done, proposed erosion controls, um, the standard of information that would be um, requested at this point would be something that would be standard for notice of intent. And it would not be this, the level of work here is not, <clears throat> I don't see how it can actually impact a resource area. And the question that this application is asking is asking the commission whether or not the work will impact a resource area. Um, and so, I'm not seeing how any more of this work will impact a resource area or that any directly was. So I'm not sure that fully engineered plans would be an appropriate request in this case. Uh, I, I'm personally feeling like I'm kind of uh, flying blind here. Like unless I see a full set of plans, I, I feel like Jen, I can't make a determination or opine in any way. So that that's where I'm, you know, I feel like we can, we're talking about this a little bit circularly right now. So. You know, that's my few cents. I don't know how other commissioners feel. But um, if so, you folks haven't been out there, it might be clearer if you had been to understand the site rather than fully engineered plans. So, yeah, so, so Laura, Laura, just so I understand your, your question, you're asking me for a fully um, engineered site plans on the site. For what, a what yeah, what I'm asking for is I when we look at when we look at what's been done 
And then we hear, I mean, what I'm hearing is that there are no plans to build in certain areas, but yet there's been clearing there. It's I, just, I, you know, but so, so, but at the same time, it's just, it's hard for us to give approval to, for something unless we know precisely where the development's going to be. Um, and, and just for a little bit of background, when, we're, when we are looking to approve um, requests like these, um, you know, we, it, it is not typical that we all have to go on site. So typically we're provided enough information to look at, to look at the designs and the maps to be able to make determinations. So um, just, okay. to, yeah, just to remind you, we're, we're Understood. all- Understood, understood. Okay, good. Thanks, Laura. Other commissioners? So we can provide the information um, and a solid set of GIS sketch plans that go over the concept plans that are land surveyed to the commission that would show the limit of work being listed at the um, limit of clearing that is currently there and show a notation that says no additional clearing or stumping and that there would be the building envelope would go to the top of the toe of the slope, if that is what the commission would require to make a negative determination without fully engineered plans, we can revise the submitted plans. That seems like it would be a good compromise. Um, yeah, something that we think... can just go ahead, right. Fletcher. Well, yeah, because we're not, I don't think we're asking for a complete engineered plans here, but yeah. what you just, Erica, but what you just spelled out there, now you're, now I think people are starting to get a little bit more comfortable. We're not yeah. saying we need the exact house plans immediately with but what you just, you know, we under, we want to understand the contours of the property on the paper. Sure. What that limit Fletcher, of work is going to be. Fletcher, just so you understand, I believe we submitted topos from um, Harold Ethan Associates, which shows the topos of the lot, which, which with the, shows with Erica's map, which shows the topography of the lot. It should show that on there. Totally. And if we could just have the no, it, resource area delineations and buffers, and then like the building envelope I, and the proposal. I believe part. that's all on there. Isn't that all on there on the drawing that you showed, which all has the red lines and everything in there? It shows so the building the overlay envelope. does have the contours on it. It shows the building envelope. It shows the contours. It shows the wetlands delineation. It shows all of that stuff on there. So I'm, I'm, I'm a little confused and excuse me if I'm ex if confused, but it, it shows that all on there. So this was the original plan that was submitted with this application, just for Correct. context. Well, the, I, I, excuse me, excuse me, sir. Let me yeah, speak for a moment. Sure, sure. Um, this is the original plan that was submitted with the application. There was no building envelope. There was no limit of work sign line. All there was, was the annotations and the points for where the wetland are. Sure. I, so, I, excuse me, I'm not done yet. Um, I responded and said, there's information missing here. We need a building envelope. We need a limit of work line. And that was submitted to us. The problem is that um, when we're, when we're viewing this, um, excuse me, just one sec while I get back to it, hmm. it, you're showing the building envelope over the slope, go, extending over the the slope where the clearing has already occurred and the commission wants to see that adjusted before they approve it. Um, I also would continue to advocate for the fact that we have some sort of a drainage plan because my concern is it doesn't matter where the building envelope is. If drainage is being directed onto that slope, there's an opportunity for erosion to go down into that resource area. I, I understand. It, in that plan, it shows a hash line which shows the building envelope around the entire perimeter of the plan. That, that's established by the town of Amherst. That, that's the hash line that goes around the perimeter. That's the building envelope. Yeah, I mean, so I just, I'd like to just talk to the commission directly for a minute here. Um, I don't personally feel like this plan is adequate um, to protect the resource. And I do think that we need some information on the drainage and what the plan is for how the drainage is gonna be handled on the site. Um, I, I have concerns about the building envelope extending down onto the slope. I have concerns about the issue of the clearing, um, in a jurisdictional area without any sort of restitution whatsoever, that there should be some sort of planting and there should be some sort of demarcation there that that area is not going to be encroached upon. Um, the commission is fully within its right to 
if they think that a notice of intent is required for this, they're fully within their right to do that. If the applicant wanted to um, adjust the plans to incorporate some additional things, the commission could ask that and the, the applicant could take the opportunity to adjust the plans to, to um, provide some additional information. Um, if the commission is comfortable with this, you can approve it as is, but it, it feels very much like you guys are getting a lot of pressure right now to act quickly and in the interest of the applicant. And I'm just wanting to make sure that you know that you have multiple options here and you don't need to um, be pressured to do something that could potentially um, not work out well. So I, I, would, I would let the commission know that the, there is regularly um, clearing up to 25 feet to intermittent streams and BBWs and building allowed up to structures within 50 feet. Um, this is out, uh, a lower request than that, but I think that I'm hearing that a revised plan that takes the building envelope out of the commission's jurisdiction would be the best way to go. So I think the applicant would like to request a continuance for us to revise the plan for the commission to review at the next available hearing. That seems like a great compromise. I appreciate that, Erica um, and Dan. And I want to say, you know, we're all doing the best we can here. We're trying to understand as best we can. You know, we all are professionals in our own right in other areas, and we do this as volunteer. And, you know, we have a lot of technical experience combined here. So please um, take us, you know, give us the benefit of the doubt here that we're doing our best with the information we have and the time we have to treat this as keep this process as fair as possible. Um, so I appreciate the, the compromise, Erica. We want to keep this moving, Dan. I know you want to keep it moving. Um, so yeah, so I think a plan that pulls the building envelope out of the jurisdictional area would be fantastic. Some, Erica, if you can think about some sort of planting or stabilization of that slope, that also I think would be great I would, to consider. I um, I would ask then why the commission had not done an enforcement order that required this and instead instructed the applicant to file an RDA to permit the work. Quite well, happy to adjust the building envelope, but this was the direct explicit instruction of the commission to file this way. And it is a frequently permitted performance standard meeting activity to clear to the 50 foot. And we're already saying there will be no clearing mm -hmm. beyond what is already there, no stump pulling. It would be an activity that would be permittable. Why were we directed to this application or not had enforcement activity taken? So quite happy to come back with a revised plan that talks about where the billing envelope is outside the commission's jurisdiction. But we were instructed to file under an RDA to permit the work as it is. But Erica, what's the difference if the reason we're keeping the li limit of work, including that slope that's been cleared, and you said it's that we, we're not going to leave it plans. in the limit of work because you might do some landscaping. What's the difference between just putting that up front and stabilizing the slope with some plantings? Because I mean, why does it matter if you show that now homeowner. versus? Because that allows the homeowner to use landscape plantings if they choose to in an area in which is frequently permitted to be altered, meets a performance standard the commission themselves are obligated to to operate under, this is allowed to clear to the 50 foot. We are giving up more than that. And if they want to be able to do landscape plantings, that should be allowed. We shouldn't have to have native plantings in a restoration. It should have been done under an enforcement order and we are directed to permit this as the standards do, do, do a direct the commission to allow this, this area to be cleared. So I'm happy to pull the limit of work, the building envelope out because I don't believe there's any intention to actually put the house down the slope. No, the not at all. Of, the intention of showing that there is to allow for any site work that might have been required in an area that had already been cleared. We'll put no stumping and we'll happily move the slope fence up to the edge um, and put some additional backup erosion controls as necessary. Great. So commissioners, I any just, input? Sorry, okay, go ahead. I just want to say, you guys can request plantings. You guys can request stabilization, regardless of whether there's an enforcement order on the site. You can request that as part of any application, any permit, you can request it as a revision. I'm so sorry, Ms. Jacques, that's not actually a, um, true. You have to actually review the application that's in front of you. You can't direct a permit and how to design and construct on a site. 
Well, yeah. if you think that there's going to be impacts to a resource area on a slope, you absolutely can. Yeah, we can issue an enforcement order and to do so. I, I'll respectfully disagree on that. Um, the, let's, there, let's no, on, I'm sorry. Let's... Legally, there are a couple of decisions. You can issue a positive determination, require us to go for a notice of intent, which would not be consistent with any of the commission's previous decisions, or you can issue an enforcement order and require it done, which again would not be consistent with commission's behavior up to this point, what was directed for the last three months to the applicant, nor any of its previous decisions. We're already compromising. I'm sorry that this was a violation, but these activities are regularly permitted. We do not need to do native plantings. You cannot direct us. You have to tell us, will this impact a resource area? Even if we come in with an order, you can do an order of conditions. Sure, but you cannot direct us with a native planting plan, what it must be. You have to make a decision about what is being in front of the commission. This is an overreach for something that is regularly permitted in front of the commission. And we spent the last three months developing plans and delineations under the presumption that this is what the commission would like. We are now- Erica, this is not an overreach if you violated the wetland. Sorry. Sorry. The but violation should be dealt with under an enforcement yeah. order then. That is a separate legal and regulatory process, which I conduct on a regular basis. So it can be dealt with under an enforcement order. We were directed to permit the work. Restoring with native plantings is not permitting the work. We're instructed to permit the work with an RDA. This is what we filed. We're happy to move the building envelope out of the commission's jurisdiction. The clearing as it is, if it needs to be restored, that should be an enforcement order. Can Commissioners. We have, clarity, yeah, we have clarity on what we're asking for um, here so we can move on. Yeah, so I was just gonna say, commissioners, I um, need some input here. So it sounds like there's a willingness to compromise and pull the building envelope out of our jurisdictional area. I need others input on moving forward with conditioning for stabilization of the slope and sediment erosion controls here. Um, is this something that we want to pursue or are we have, happy with additional information and coming back to continuing this RDA um, with the idea that we'd need to make a decision with just that additional information in the next meeting? Yeah, Fletcher, go ahead. So Erica, you just said that you'll bring up a silt fence up to this top of the slope. You mentioned that, right? You yep, mentioned you're absolutely. going to put in the uh, erosion control, whatever the whatever you want to do, the cotton fiber for the currently for the um, for the soil slope. Is that, is that that's correct? Correct. Jen, is yep. that where so you're getting at? So we're just matting. trying to confirming that as we start to move forward on this silk mm -hmm. fencing or we like silk socks. We do we do both, Fletcher. We do. We rather have those socks. Um, but um, I'm not sure about the rest of the commissioners on the on moving. Are we okay with what's currently on the stump? So you were saying no more stumping is going to occur on the slope, correct? Correct. So you're saying no more work on the slope is happening. You're not. Correct. We're going to the say there's no. The trees that were cut on the slope are leaning in. Trees are leaning. Yeah, that's out. fine. I'm just saying net moving forward. There's yeah, no, no more work absolutely. happening on this slope. So we're going to stabilize no. the slope now, right? Right. That's what we're saying. Slope, okay. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. That's all. But that's there's all, no that's all active work to stabilize the slope. We're just protecting the. Correct. Well, currently, right the now. active work will be to install the silt fence and the straw bait waddles that go through there. I install both of them because I feel like that's a adequate protection on it. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm just confirming what, what we're moving forward, and then obviously with the, uh, the plan changes, we're going to do move the Absolutely. limited work back off, back off the slope. Uh, the current building envelope. I'm sorry, I'm just trying to um, keep everything going in my head. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, are you guys are you guys thinking of moving all of the work outside of jurisdiction? I mean, Fletcher, well, is that what you're suggesting? Because moving the building envelope out of the buffer and moving the um, silt fence to the top of the slope, I think would effectively do that. So I can't yeah. see that. That's that's I don't. I can't see that. So that's why I'm just yeah. confirming with Erica right. about what we were just talking about. That would include, yes, that would approximately be the same. The top of the slope is just slightly within the 100 foot buffer to, um, you know, as you see, how it crisscrosses the BVW is the top of slope. Um, and we're looking to permit 
the clearing as it is because that was a violation to mm -hmm. have that remain in place as it is. But the limit of work still would be within the jurisdiction. Which is where the, the clearing is because it would be left in place and not fully restored. And yeah. that they could do landscape planting there. They could, you know, um, do something that was attractive among the stumps, things like that. But no further grading, no construction activities, simply that it would be usable yard space with the stumps in place, no stumping, no grinding. Michelle, did you have a comment or question? As far as permitting the work that's already taken place, which would be in violation of our bylaws, I would like to see conditions on that for native replantings, not shrubs with that are going to be seeding the wetlands down below and changing the native composition of waterways downstream. So, May I ask now, how it's consistent with the permits that the commission has issued for even the neighboring properties? You can see that's cleared to 50 feet to the BBW. Long. Well, just in regard to the violation that's taken place, that would be the condition that I'd like to see. Well, the violation can be dealt with as an enforcement order. This would be a determination to permit the work. Michelle, I support you, what you're saying right now. Um, so other commissioners who we haven't heard from. I just need a sense of where you are on this. Larry, Leroy, um, do you feel like the information on the table is sufficient or should we be asking for more here? I'd like to echo Michelle's point on that. Uh, it is in violation. So it's actually pretty consistent with what we have required for mitigating violations in the past. So um, would you require, so this, are you going to require us to do need a plan? Hold on, Erica, can you please let me I'd, I'd like to ask a question about what's being required. Are you going to ask us to do a native planting plan and then come back and permit the removal of those plants? Because the commission's performance standard for work to an intermittent stream or BVW allows clearing 50 feet, and this is at 60, no lawn, nothing. Are we being required under an enforcement order to restore this and then come back and permit it and take them out as something that is allowed under the commission's own regulations? Is this the top of slope line right here that's shown the contour? Is that the- Top of slope line is appro yeah, approximately that contour. Okay. And so, what we're talking about is the area down here that's that's been cleared and you're you, everything that we've been talking about is moving the silt fence to the top of that slope keeping the building envelope at the top of that slope so why wouldn't why would any work be proposed on that slope after we're just asking for plantings or stabilization there you're talking about pulling them out i'm not sure where we're being required to pay for expensive native plantings and I'm saying that if that is not what the applicant wants to put there, they can do that by permitting this work. They can stabilize the slope using a variety of other types of plants, grasses, anything that they'd like, erosion control matting, but the, they cannot, they sh, they, if they're going to be required to restore with native plantings, they can come back and then permit the removal of those native plantings. I'm not seeing what the okay. game, like how it is something that can be required when this is something that is regularly permitted with lawn further than this. Well, I, so I, I hear what you're saying, Erica. I, I do as far as the limit of work. And I think like you recently were with us on a, on a, the Trillium Way site. And that's, I think I, I use that actually to compare with this one different in the sense that there was a proposed contour, there was a proposed house footprint, a proposed driveway. There was a lot of additional detail provided on that. And it was easy to distinguish the fact that there was a large slope in between the proposed house and the wetland. So even if you guys were in your building envelope, water isn't gonna travel up and over a hill to get to the wetland, right? Um, I, I think this site is, is unique because of the slope issues. Now, the commission is very, very flexible in terms of allowing people to have a yard and grass and you know to have an area to use in relation to a single family home. The concern is that slope. So this, the violation I think is being compounded by the fact that a slope is 
has been exposed and now there's a potential for erosion, particularly if you're opening up that area. There's been some but opening up already open with- the, three, the site's been open for over three months. Nothing's reached the resource area. We, 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 yeah, but there's, there's been no ex be excavation. It's just from vehicles. Why does, it need turning... to be native? Why does it need to be native plantings? Because it's if we restore to the top of slope, we're taking everything out of the commission's jurisdiction. It should have been an enforcement order. What are we permitting if we need to restore that entire thing up to the, to up to the top of slope? I don't think that, I think that adding a couple plantings and potentially stabilizing with some seed how um, does this not meet a performance standard? Which performance standard does it not meet to put landscape in there, lawn around the tree stumps? On the slope? You're correct. Yeah. What, what well, performance standard? I, there, there is a, there's a potential for alteration of resource area of BVW. Stabilize the slope? Well, if, ma it's if material is moving months. down that slope, rills and going, which you mm -hmm. mentioned at the beginning, if the so slope is, exposed. the slope has currently been exposed, the site up above is opened up, material so moves down the slope. what is the difference in terms of in risk to the resource area between putting grass around the stumps or native plantings? Both of those stabilize the slope, correct? Do, does grass stabilize slopes in addition to native plantings? Yes, it does. Okay, so I'm not sure why we need to put native plantings into an area in which he would be allowed to put grass into under this permitting standard. The work occurred three months ago. We want to stabilize the slope. Grass will do so. I don't see how functionally it poses a risk Erica, to the resource area. I think, I think, Erica, because there was a violation, the commission... Which should be dealt with under an enforcement order. If we were told to permit the work, this is where you permit it. We, we've done there's, what there's, we were told to do. There's been a lot of interruption going on in the course of this call. It's very yeah. rude. People need to allow commissioners to speak. Yeah. I don't think that's really a regulatory thing. <clears throat> no, it's Robert's rules of order is definitely a regulatory. Okay. It's okay. not okay. a regulatory okay. standard at all. All right. Um, it is a so polite standard, but it's not a regulatory standard. Okay. How does that impact my client's ability? to do work that is allowed. And what performance standard does replanting that area with grass not meet? So Erica, you can argue as much as you like. I think I, I'm asking need, an information. Commissioners public, need to weigh in and member, what it is we're looking for. How about as a resident of the town of Amherst? This is totally How about as a resident of the town of Amherst, I have a public comment. This is so counterproductive. We're trying to get through this. As a resident <laughs> of the town of Amherst, I have a question. You're not, here as a resident, you're not here as a resident. You're not here I as a resident. I appear as both. Right I do now, not give up my rights as a citizen Chair, by doing permitting. I, I would ask what for you to step in stand, does it and not take mean? control of this meeting, Chair. Yeah, I'm doing my best. I can't get a word in edgewise. I'm asking about um, it. All right. So I'm I in agreement with my consultant, but I would ask for you to get control of your board. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Control of my board. My board is asking respectful questions and trying to figure out how to move forward in this permit in a way that best protects the resource in the best interest of the town of Amherst. And, and so far, that. there's just been repeated behavior of disrespecting and interrupting everything that we're trying to say and ask. My chair, um, my, my well, consultant is offering areas. everything Please. possible to the chair as for questions being answered. Great, she does. yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, okay, if I can just finish just getting a sense from commissioners, Larry, can you weigh in a little bit here on um, wisdom on how you would see, like to see this moving forward? Oh, you're muted, Larry. I would like to see us go forward, but I would like to see us get more information and be, define things better in this process. Yeah. What would you like to see, Larry? I would like to see a better definition of what the envelope of the house is going to be. I mean, I, I agree with you as a builder that you'd like to main, maintain a large area so you've got flexibility, but it, you're encroaching on an environmental area, so I'd like to see you define it better. 
Yeah, so it sounds like we're back to our original compromise where we should continue um, this hearing to the next meeting, which is on the March 23rd. And it would be great if we could see a plan that shows the revision of moving <clears throat> the building envelope out of our jurisdiction. The debate is gonna remain how we treat that limit of work area, but this will give us a chance to cool down and figure out, do a little bit more information collection um, so we can figure out how to move forward. So, um, commissioners, sorry, go ahead, Dan. I'm sorry to interrupt. I just wanna be very, very clear because I would have done this from the first get-go. You're asking me for a house plan to be presented on that, like a building envelope, like I would turn into the building department. Is that what you're asking me for? No, I was using building no. envelope the way it's used in the call outs on the plan that was submitted, just where okay. you're showing what was that like 10,000, I believe, square sure. foot area in yeah. which you could put a building. That is on the plan. That is the hash line that surrounds the outside perimeter of the uh, lot. That's on there. So what I can present you guys is an actual house plan that sits on that building envelope which shows the actual perimeter of the home, driveway and all that stuff. I can do that. That was never asked of me. Okay, I didn't know if you had that. That would be great. I, if you know this at this point, that would be great information for us. I was never asked of that and I would have provided that for this meeting. 100% I would have. That's how we operate. Okay, we, great. We put a building on the lot and we present it. It's not what I was asked for for this. The building envelope is on that lot. It shows the hashtag of where you can put a home with inside that. Yeah. And that's I we thought we that. were adjusting it slightly was the compromise, but if you're willing no, to if, show us, if that's what you're asking, then I can go back and look at compromising that building envelope, which is assessed by the town of Amherst with the zoning. Yeah. I mean, I think commissioners back, please correct me if I'm wrong, but my understanding was that building envelope not the footprint of the building. The building envelope was going to be pulled out of our jurisdiction. Right now it's marginally within our jurisdiction. Dan, if you have the ability to show us the actual building footprint and driveway footprint, that's fantastic. But sure it's, it's more under, yeah, that would be really, really great um, and really help inform the discussion better. Sure. And I, I, I just don't know if it's within your jurisdiction to pull the building envelope out of that wetlands because that's, that's assessed by the zoning. That's established by the zoning. Eric, am I correct in saying that or? I think that what I'm hearing is that there's a, a bit of um, the building envelope, yes, zoning and what's assessed. And then in this particular sketch plan, the building envelope represents areas in which you could locate the house right. and cool. any other site work in which yeah. you needed to do. So, yeah. yeah. And we are talking about pulling that up to the top of the slope. Yes, yeah. I just want to be very clear with you. That's all. Okay, that's great. I appreciate yep. that. Um, this sounds like a way forward. Um, commissioners, are we comfortable with this in terms of the information that in, having that additional information and continuing the hearing? Yes, continue the hearing. Erica you, hear, you hear, Erica, you heard everything we asked for. We already went fast. We talked about this a half hour ago. Dan, add the plans if you can with the house. That'd be great. Fantastic. You, heard, you heard our concerns, right? Our concerns right. are the slope. Exactly. Our concerns are drainage. Our concerns are plantings. We're not just, I'm just, let, I'm just saying, I'm not telling you to do anything right now. I'm just letting you know what our concerns are. So when you come back to us with these plans, you know what we just talked about, Erica, you know what, what, what we asked for, but you also heard our other concerns. So just and throwing I, that out there. I, We're going to continue this. And I, it's not at, at times I'm concerned that we're asked to give a blank check and we don't want to give a blank check. Okay. All right. So I think we're at a point where we can move forward. It sounds like commissioners are happy with this direction. Applicants, are you guys okay with continuing this? Because it would move us outside of, I think, a 21 day window to respond to the RDA to make a determination. Are you am okay I, with the continuance? Am I okay with it? No, I'm not okay with it, but I understand. So just moving forwards, if the commission or the conservation representative would just specify exactly what everyone wants, this would be alleviated way ahead of time. That, that's okay. all. Not, not okay. being rude. I'm just being very matter of fact. That's all. Totally. We understand that you're trying to move forward and we're 
genuinely doing the best that we yeah. can here. You gotta just um, remember, we have a, a housing shortage. There's no housing out there, period. Okay. Um, so it looks like we need, so Aaron, I have a procedural question. We have some uh, members of the public with raised hands at this point. I would say that we continue the hearing notify the public that we're going to be continuing to um, Wednesday, March 23rd at 7.40 p.m. And that at that time, we'll review the re revision and take additional public comment. Okay. Just to be clear, we're only talking about one lot here, right? I yeah. think so, I think so, yeah. The other yeah. lot is out of jurisdiction. Right, yeah. Thank you so much, yep, perfect. Um, Commissioner, so I need a motion to continue this hearing. I'll do that. Um, I'm gonna make a motion to move. Um, I'm sorry, what, what's the address in again? Um, it's zero Ooh. Tuckerman. It's zero zero Tuckerman, Tuckerman and zero Kingman, but is this zero one Tuckerman. zero Tuckerman, Dan? It's, it's zero, zero Tuckerman. Tuckerman we're only talking about, correct. Okay. Yep. Remove the uh, request for determination to uh, March 23rd at 740. Yes, sir. Uh, sorry, what, Aaron, you're muted. You're asking something. So this hearing is for both properties. So if we're continuing this, oh, it's sorry. continuing it for both. But the revisions are just for the one. Just revisions so. only for Tucker Men, but this is for both zero Kingman and zero uh, Tucker Men. Perfect. Second. Okay. Voice vote. Michelle. Aye. Fletcher. Aye. Uh, Laura. Aye. Larry. Aye. Leroy. Aye. Okay, and I'm an aye. So Dan, Erica, thank you. Um, thank you for working with us on this. Um, members of the public um, will be back continuing this hearing and discussing it on March 23rd at ideally 740 if things run on time. So please feel free to tune back in. Right. Um, and yeah, again, thanks everyone for working Appreciate together. Your time, Jen. Thank you. Yep. Uh, have a good night, you guys. You too. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to teach you. Okay. All right. <laughs> so that was the last hearing on the agenda. Let me regroup on this agenda for a second. Um, okay. So the two other big things we have to discuss are some administrative changes to Hickory Ridge and the Hickory Ridge Solar Array um, and a request for extension of order of conditions at Amherst Hills, which is the Tofino um, properties uh, up on the ridge. Um, let's see, Aaron, do you have a preference about the order? Oh, you're muted still, Aaron. If we could do Hickory Ridge first, um, I know Tom Reedy's on the call and he's waiting yeah. for the, that discussion item. Yeah, Tom, if I see you, Tom, I'll move you in. Tom. Hello, can you hear Hello. me? Hello. Apologies for the delay, Tom. What a great job you all did, holy cow. <laughs> Um, is there anyone else that we should bring into the meeting? No, just, okay. just me. Okay. All right. Um, so commissioners, as, um, some background, uh, this is a request for a minor administrative change to the order of conditions for the Hickory Ridge solar project that we approved. Um, there, Aaron has done a lot of information gathering and Tom, thank you in advance for your detailed um, answers to a lot of those questions as we tried to figure out what's going on. Um, the heart of it is that there's been a change to the layout of the array and Laura, I apologize that I don't know how the vocabulary to use to talk about this. So you might have to pretty good. Array is correct good. it. Good. Um, so that it is, um, would the new array layout would require some of the panels to overlap a sewer easement, a town sewer easement that goes to the property. And you can see it 
in the Aaron slide and the image on the left, I think, existing. Is that the green? I'll, I'll highlight it. Hold on one second. Yeah. Um, and the town, uh, DPW has now asked that um, the arrays be kept out off of that easement so that there's emergency access. And as a result, in order to keep the same capacity of the array, um, they've the applicant or um, the project is asking that we move, we extend a little bit more to an intermittent stream um, that we had originally been further away from. As a reminder, this is a complicated site because the original kind of struggle was to keep the array out of the floodplain, the FEMA mapped floodplain for the Fort River running through the site. Um, so Tom, do you want to give us kind of a three minute, probably much improved overview yeah, or yeah. add any so, additional information? I'd be happy to, you, you did a great job. Um, so yeah, really what's happened here is the original array was approved with uh, horizontal racking. So east to west. And the new design is for north to south racking because what they're going to have is single access trackers, meaning the panels themselves will start off facing in the east, track the sun towards the west, and then reset overnight and then do it all over again. There's actually a reduction of the number of modules. It was like 15,000 and now it's only 11,000 because it's much more efficient to have those single access trackers. The only problem is it goes uh, north to south as a result in, in while there's that sewer easement, we reached out to Scales Gilbert. I had a conversation with them, and they said this is this sewer line takes really all of South Amherst sewerage, about forty thousand gallons per hour. And so, if there's an issue there, we want to be able to get to it. And so, the discussion was, well, because these are now vertical, we're, Um, as you'll see with that, that green on the left side of your screen in the, in the proposed condition, I'll call it. Um, and so what we've done is shifted to the west uh, because to the east is priority habitat and floodplain. To the north is priority habitat. To the south is priority habitat. So really the only direction we could go was west. And so we've eliminated the shadow. There was a shadow, a 40 foot shadow management buffer. We've eliminated that. Um, and we're proposing, and it's, this has been approved by Misty Ann over at the Division of Fisheries and Wildlife, uh, the Zoning Board of Appeals, and we're also, so maybe a little bit, we should be closing with the town tomorrow so that the town will own this. Um, and so we've talked to Dave Zomek, we've recorded an easement plan evidencing this bump out. And so really what it does is allows the town clear and open access to that out of the 30 that we side to that area and we're also east corner of the eastern array you'll see that in the old condition there were some horizontal uh, rows there and some panels if you look in the proposed condition we've taken those out so we're staying out of priority habitat over there and some floodplain so you know net we think it's an improvement um and like I said, we've talked to the other folks and it seems to make a lot of sense. So I'm happy to answer any questions that you've got, but that's a, I know you've had a long night. So brief overview. Um, and can you just repeat? So this now puts us how close to the intermittent stream? It's within the- So the limit is third. Ooh, Tom, you're breaking up on me. We're not, we're not going any closer than feet to the, oh boy. You, 30 you feet. Get no closer 30 than 30 feet. feet. So there's a 30, 30 foot. feet. Yes, that's okay. the limit of disturbance is 30 feet, and the arrays themselves will be further away than that. Okay. Okay. Um, commissioners, any questions on what's being asked here? Is this cool? <laughs> Are we, do we have to? So Misty Ann, you said Misty, uh, so natural, uh, natural heritage is like, they're okay with it. Yep. I got, and I, Erin should have that. I forwarded her the email. Okay. Uh, yeah, she was, I put the whole thing together to her. She was fine with it. Zoning, Rob Mora was fine with it. Dave was fine with it, but obviously 
you know, you're your independent body. So I'm not trying to say you have to be, but those folks have signed on. Yeah. It's what kind of reduction in area was there of the panels? Oh, I don't know the specifics. Um, we are here in this, in this, we're looking to keep at least eight feet open, um, you know, to the sky so they can get in with whatever equipment it, that may increase Guilford and Jason and I haven't talked about what exactly will show up there. Um, but we won't come back to this well to ask for what we're asking for is the limit. We're not going to come back and ask for anything else. Okay. Um, other commissioners, um, thoughts on this? Well, here's looking at you, Laura. I think this is fine. This is pretty standard. And just, just for the sake of the discussion, there's um, less impact to bordering land subject to flooding. So di direct resource area impact under wetland protection and under our bylaw. The buffer zone is considered a resource area under our bylaw. So there is that change, but bordering land subject to flooding is a net improvement under both Wetland Protection Act and um, our, our bylaw. Yeah, I mean, when I first was reading about this, I was concerned about moving closer to that intermittent stream, but now understanding the net, the net, net mitigation of negative impact and um, the reason behind the changes and feel comfortable with like all of the alternatives that were kind of looked into, I, I'm okay with moving forward with this. Um, but if there's more, then we're going to have to figure that out um, just because of like the Tetris that we did to try to keep it out of the resource as much as possible in the original permit application. Yeah, understood. Um, other commissioners though, Fletcher, you, you, do you have any further? No, I was, it, no, it seems pretty, I mean, straightforward. If everyone else is okay with it, Aaron, you're all feeling all right with it. I'm fine with it. Yeah. Okay. Let's close this deal, okay. huh? Yeah. Yeah. I've, I'm comfortable approving this minor administrative change to the order of conditions for the Hickory Ridge Solar project. Again, thank you for all the information, Tom. We really appreciate it. Sure. Thank you. Uh, so do we, we yeah, do we make a motion on this one, Aaron? Yes. Okay. Um, can I make a motion to, um, for, to accept the request of a minor administrative change for the order of conditions? Hickory Ridge Solar, DEP file number 89-0646. Second. Thanks, Larry. Voice vote, Fletcher. Aye. Larry. Aye. Michelle. Aye. Laura. Aye. Leroy. Aye. And I'm an aye. All right, sorry about the wait, Tom. Thank you. No, not at all. Thanks so much. You guys all, the town will own this probably tomorrow, if, if not, then Friday. So congratulations. Awesome. You did a great That's job. Great. Yeah, yeah, you made it. We made it. That's really great. exciting. Thanks, Tom. Yeah, okay, you got it. Good seeing everyone. Have yep. a good night. You too. Good all right. One more, guys. Um, so go it's ahead, not Aaron. actually on the... Um, on the slide, because I'm not sure how I managed to leave it off of there, but um, uh, Amherst Hills, am I saying that right? Yeah, Amherst yeah. Hills subdivision, mm -hmm. which is the Tifino project, um, they have come forward requesting a three year um, continuance on their order of conditions. Um, I did speak offline with, um, with Jen about this because I did have some some concerns and apprehensions about this, particularly because of the fact that we um, have already identified the fact that there's resource area changes and the permit is um, about 20 years old, I think as of next year. So um, I think that, my, I mean, my conversation with Jen was, I wouldn't recommend that the commission extend more than one year. And I think that we should tell the applicant that we are highly urging them to complete the work on the road as soon as possible because 
um, leaving it open-ended that, oh, we're going to leave this permit open until you sell your lots in the subdivision um, is, you know, the, the lots, you know, the, the permit's already 20 years old. We already know that the site conditions have changed and individual permits are going to be filed for these lots anyways. So the road work needs to get wrapped up so that we can close out this permit. And um, that's kind of my, my recommendation to you guys. Um, I was trying to f find it, but I'm having trouble. Am I able I've to got share? A... I can pull it up. Um, yeah. Your mind foggy or something right well, now? Well, no, it's not that. <laughs> I'm, like, that I'm thing, like traumatized. My, <laughs> through that whole thing, my one-year-old has been upstairs screaming hysterically the entire time. So it's compounded. Compounded. Um, yeah, so just quick overview. So Tofino has asked for a three-year um, continuance on the extension on the order of conditions for that permit, which is basically like the road and everything associated with it. All the individual lots have to file individual permits. Um, so the question is, and the way I think having looked at this from a few angles, I think rather than approve an extension for three years, I think one year is a reasonable amount of time. Um, so now Aaron's finally sharing Ted's letter. Um, but I think that that is like completely reasonable given that the permit will as of August of 2023, April of 2023. So yeah, so basically a year, it will be 20 years old, um, which is pretty unconventional to have that open for that long. Um, so I think that that is, I'm with Aaron. I think that with the information we have and the kind of tenure of this, this project, I think that's a good compromise direction, but I'm interested to hear if commissioners have questions or, are not comfortable with that. Seems pretty straightforward. I mean, they could always come back to the board if they have a hardship after a year and are halfway done and need a little more time. Um, but this way, they we can just express it's a continuation. But you know, we want the road work done and wrap this permit up. And you could put that all in writing, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So just if you explain, it seems pretty straightforward to me, give them a year, but say like, listen, we can review it if, for those hardship purposes, if they have that, if that's whatever. We have a vote? Yes, we do. Yeah. Anyone else? So anyone else have any comments? Everyone's tired. <laughs> okay, I'll move I'm to, um, uh, ex do, I'll move for the request to extend the permit for Oregon conditions DEP file number 89-432 for one year. Second. Voice vote, Fletcher. Aye. Larry. Aye. Michelle. Aye. Laura. Aye. Leroy. Aye. Okay, and I'm an aye. Um. <laughs> The one other issue was the um, forest cutting plan, which I know is uh, time sensitive. And Michelle did have some comments on, um, I believe, one of them. Michelle, you want to jump in on that? Yeah, sorry, guys. I did have some comments. <laughs> um, it's for both of them. Um, I guess I looked, I didn't see, I saw the start date was early March, so a pass date. I didn't see a duration or an end date to it. And my concern is about nesting birds. Right now is the nesting owl and hawk breeding season. And coming up, we'll be nesting cavity nesters, so chickadees, titmice, all the woodpeckers. Um, and I'm wondering if we have like a, you know, a bird survey before the cutting, because a take of any of those species is a violation of the Federal Migratory Bird Treaty Act, which, you know, that's big, that's big suit money and jail time. So in addition to protecting the wildlife on that property, um, it would be illegal if there was a nest that got cut down in that forest, in that forest cutting, which is, I think one of them I looked at was 20 acres. So that's my concern. I don't know how we work with that. Oh, I think there's any, I've never heard of requiring that. 
I mean, in California, it's like you have, you just have to do it, but there's very different regulations in that state. So I don't really know how it works on the local or state level here, but it's a significant enough patch of forest that. Um, Can I ask a question just to sort of try to move this? Is there a way that we could ask them to um, p push the start date to a later time that would avoid um, impacts to the owls and hawks and or would we just be kicking the can and then impacting more species if we did that? The cutting plans are good for two years and you can um, re-up them every year after that up to four years. So um, I've never heard of requests like that. I filed many cutting plans in my time. So I know for the one on poor farm, the purpose is conservation um, sure. and habitat improvement. So, and I've already been in contact with the, the um, forester there who's very willing to work with us. So I can mention this stuff and ask them to do inspections for the birds. I'm sure they'd be more than happy to do that, particularly for the owl and hawk situation. Um, the others I'm not as familiar with. I do know the forester though, so I could speak to him and just ask him. Um, but I, beyond that, I'm not really sure how we could resolve it tonight. If it's like, we could just no matter what time of year they would do it, they would be impacting a bird. Or if we would be telling them, we would like for you to do it during this specific window, which we could recommend if you have that window right now. Or it sounds like they could do a bird sur a survey, Michelle. Yeah. Or, did I hear that wrong? Yeah, I mean, that's what I would recommend. And also doing it ASAP and getting it done really soon. Like I, I would like to know when they're gonna be done by, because um, we're just, we're just, it's just getting worse as far as impacts to nesting birds. Um, so Michelle, are you okay with, it sounds like we just need to understand how the like look, the state and local regs encompass the federal regulation here. So it sounds like maybe talking to the foresters is a good way to get more information on how this is accounted for in the cutting plans. Is that okay with you as a way the forward? The service forester, yeah, you can talk to them. Yeah, I know both the foresters here, so I can just talk to them and let them know it was the concern was expressed. Go yeah, ahead, I've Pilcher. never actually come across anything that that that's that because I yeah, I do I do this all the time and I I've never actually had anybody I've never heard of the federal migratory bird stuff. Um, hmm. Because then the well, question is, if you ask for a bird saver, who does the bird survey? You know, does it have to be somebody that's certified? Is it, or does it, you know what I mean? Like, you have to have a timing, like, does it have to happen at night? I guess it's really hard to see that. But the question is, like, what the standard would be for a survey? Well, maybe the question is, how is the federal migratory bird, right. how are the federal yeah. migratory bird regulations uh, enacted mm -hmm. at the Massachusetts, the state, and local level because I, I feel like you would have heard of it Fletcher <laughs> yeah um, totally that's what I'm thinking that's what I'm, but like I'm not I'm also saying. Michelle 100 percent not questioning any of this I just am trying to figure out who we ask and kind of there's Drew, how we get Andrew Vitz is the state ornithologist and he's pretty he's very approachable with mass wildlife it's Andrew Vitz at mass.gov um, I actually know Andrew I mean I don't know what the course of action from there is but Course of action, yeah. I don't think there's much to who, for who, course of who action. contacts him. Because um, if you think about, yeah, you know, these cutting plans are happening on a, such a high daily basis all year round, and that's, that's why natural. So natural, if it's priority habitat, that's where natural heritage, and rare endangered species review program steps in, and that's so they 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 can provide. They're the ones that have the regulatory authority for take when it comes to rare and endangered species. So I guess that's, so, but you're just requesting like a bird survey or something, but when it comes to take, that's natural heritage for sure. But it's still uh, take, but it would be federal take under the MTA. Yeah, right, so that's like. So it might just not be enforced normally. I mean, that's what it's at all. like, right? Like at all. Like that, I mean, would that be surprising? No. Um, Okay. Sorry. But... I don't know. I mean, I guess I am a little surprised. It's not like a regulatory context I'm used to, but maybe it's just, you know, 20 acres of small beans and there's no feds out here looking at that. Um, <laughs> like a Hadley office, the U.S. Fish and yeah. Wildlife Service. Watch out for those feds. Um, I know. 
<laughs> um, yeah, no, I hope Michelle, your understanding of this co conversation is not in any way questioning yeah. your background in this. I'm just trying to understand like. Yeah, how the layers work with, yeah, that, with exactly. like a request like that. Yeah. So, I mean, I would say the first step is talking to the foresters and expressing the concern, seeing what they could come up with. And then we can, I can give you an update at the next meeting, see if they can come up with some kind of a compromise where they, um, I know at least one of the foresters is, um, it's Lincoln Fish, who's, you know, he, he would be extremely qualified, I think, to go through and determine if there was nest in the, on the site. On the site. Um, the other yeah, forester I, I worked with for the, the, the town of Sturbridge, he's also excellent. So I, um, I think that we should just initiate a discussion with them, a dialogue on the situation and see what they have to say. Yeah, it'd be great. I'm just interested even going forward because every time this comes up, I'll have the same question. So knowing how it's accounted for would be good. That's great. Thank you for the detailed review, Michelle. Was there anything else, Erin? I feel like we're close here. Yeah, I just see um, Andre is here and he just raised his hand. Uh, oh no, Andre. I'm just gonna promote him if you guys don't mind. Yeah, I just did, yep. Okay. Andre is our new um, conservation commissioner who's gonna be joining us hopefully at the next meeting. Andre. Maybe not anymore. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I don't think he was there. I don't think I was watching it. I don't think he was there. Thank you for the comic relief. I needed that. Oh. Hi, Andre, welcome. Oh, we can see. You're, you, but... you're, you're muted for some reason. Now you got a speaker problem. No. Nope. We can see you, but we can't hear you. <laughs> oh, connecting to audio. Connecting. There he goes. No. No. Well, everybody wave to Andre. <laughs> Hi, Andre. Hi, Andre. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> He's getting I'm earbuds. You I can hear, I'm assuming you can hear us. We're a little bit fried. It's been a long meeting, um, but we're really excited to have you on board. And hopefully you'll be sworn in and able to join us on the 23rd and we can do a more formal round of introductions. All right. All right. Thank you, Andre. I spent, spent 20 28 years in enforcing. enforcing. Oh. <laughs> Perfect. There you go. You could answer our question for us, right? Uh, um, see, like a hole, a I'll hole, help. a hole opens up and then it gets filled. Look at that. That's awesome. Amazing. That's, amazing. That's really cool. Very cool. Hopefully, our smiles, waves, and thumbs up are you can yeah, that's where catch you our can enthusiasm. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get it sorted um okay i think is that aaron are we can i okay. move to adjourn Please. yeah <laughs> yeah 533 and then um can we just do like a, a group virtual oh hug? my god like just a big group virtual hug <laughs> <laughs> this is a serious comment. if you guys have if you guys have feedback on how i can handle those situations differently or like anything constructive I can do to change how I handle situations like that. I'm constantly trying to learn from it. It feels like this happens all the time. So please email me or call me or whatever. Like I would yeah, love to what, get what better if, at this. Yeah, so let if, me know. What is your phone number? I need your phone number. Wait, so guys, did we get a second on the motion and a vote? A second. Adjourn? Yeah, oh, yeah. Thank. Oh my God, second, third, fourth. Okay, yeah, okay, voice vote. Let's do a voice there. roll call here. Okay. Fletcher. Aye. Larry. Aye. Michelle. Aye. Leroy. Aye. Laura. Aye. And I'm an I. Um, yeah, Laura, I'll, I'll email you my number. <laughs> <laughs>